that all men have inalienable rights to think freely, to talk freely, to write freely their own opinions, and to counter or utter or write upon the opinions of others. This is from the Creed of the Church of Scientology. Your time at Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. What stories you got from there? Oh, boy. Uh, okay, eight years. I joined staff when I was 17 years old. I went down to Los Angeles for full-time training for a course supervisor position, like, like, like kind of like an instructor or teacher role at the Santa Barbara Church. And I had to go down to L.A., and get trained by Sea Org people down there because there was this special project that was running that was training course supervisors. And they were supposed to be top notch, best in the world, you know, um, kind of thing. That was the positioning of this. So I thought I was all hot shot. You know, I'm all 17, I'm all hepped up, I'm all like, woo, I'm gonna save the world. And I was so excited and I was so naive. And I had not really associated much with the Sea Org yet. So they send me like on day two, right? They ship me off to Los Angeles and I show up at the Sea Org base. It's um, August or September, I think it was at this time, September, October, maybe of uh, 90, no, 87, 1987. And uh, it's hot and I show up there all, I, I'm wearing a I'm wearing an, uh, a, a raincoat or something for some reason. I got this like got this like overcoat and uh, and I'm thinking I'm all badass and I'm all ready to rock and roll and I'm gonna blow away this program and I'm gonna smoke it. I'm gonna I'm gonna show everybody how how amazing I am. And uh, and I got down there and it wasn't at all what I thought it was going to be. And the Sea Org was kind of took one look at me and was like. Uh-huh, <laughs> you know, because it was another thing where I ended up, and this was actually one of my very first experiences as a staff member, where they had to break me too. That was the whole point is, okay, uh, we're going to, because I did not get on there with a staff member attitude. When you join staff in Scientology, there are these classes you have to take that get you sort of indoctrinated and, and you know, set up in the environment, teaches you how the organization runs, teaches you how to write a dispatch to somebody else. There's a format for it. You know, all these little stupid things as to how the organization runs. And when you don't know it, you don't know it, and you sound and look like an idiot. So I show up in LA to Sea Org members who are professional, full-time, 24-7 Scientologists, and I'm basically like a public person. I don't know anything about being a staff member. And for them, staff are people to be beat on. People are, you know, staff are people to like order around. You, I say, you do. Go, right? That's how Sea Org members treat staff. So I wasn't ready for that or used to that. So it took about a week or two to, to kind of break me, you know, of like, uh, yeah, that'll be enough of that. And, uh, you know, I knew enough to not show up late to class or anything like that. But, um, but the living quarters were, you know, shared apartments, sleeping on the floor, carpet, you know, this kind of dirty carpet, dirty couches, you know, no beds. I mean, it was just, it wasn't a great scene down there. And back in 1987, the, the, the pack base, the base where I was going to, the big blue base, it was blue, kind of. It was the original blue. They hadn't actually, they, they hadn't done a repainting since they painted it blue back in 77. So it was this kind of weird baby blue. And uh, none of the buildings were renovated. And so uh, it was a very, it was more primitive than it is now. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And I did not know any of that was coming. I thought I was going to be put up in a nice place and there would be good food and, you know, it would be kind of a chill environment and I would show up to class and do my classwork and, you know, maybe have some time in an evenings or weekends or something. And no, it wasn't anything like that at all. It was full-time Sea Org scheduled, you know, 24 seven, taka, 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 let's go. And all the crap and food and other stuff was, you, you were just expected to put up with it. And I had no idea what I was getting into there at all, but it was the Sea Org mission 
in charge, the mission I see, as they say, uh, who was this Australian woman who really decided um, I probably didn't really belong there. And so next few weeks were me trying to not only be broken, but also prove myself to her. So it was, um, it was an interesting ride. That was the first of about four or five full-time training trips I took to Los Angeles. That's the best way I, I was, I was, had some Scientology terminology flying through my head there, but that's, uh, that's kind of how it went. It was, uh, it was hot. It was sweaty. It was annoying. There was uh, yelling and screaming in the classroom and outside of it. And it was a place where I learned to shut up. Basically, it's a place where I kind of learned that I needed to, that, and that was not something, I mean, you can tell I'm a talker, I'm, you know, I, I do that. And this was not a place that appreciated that. They didn't care about my opinions. They didn't care about my thoughts or ideas about anything or how to improve anything or how to, how to make things better. That None of that mattered to them. They were like, you are nobody, you, your opinion is nothing. And your job is to learn and conform. And once that got through, and it took about a week or two of reports being written on me and talking to and some yelling and some, you know, other things, you know, you start learning to keep your damn mouth shut. But I was 17 years old and I was a know-it-all. So it was really hard to learn a lesson. And even after I did learn it, I kept unlearning it. So that was, uh, that was sort of, uh, it was a rough time and I didn't make it through the training, by the way, I thought I was going to ace it totally bombed and ended up going back to my, uh, church in Santa Barbara org with my tail between my legs and, and, uh, and had to learn how to be a Scientology staff member. And there's a skill set to it to survive as a staff member in Scientology, uh, shutting up, you know, having your ears open and your mouth shut is one of the skills I needed to learn. And a year later, I got back down to LA after I kind of got staff under my belt a little bit better. And then I smoked the program and came back and it was a successful course supervisor for many years. But that was sort of the, 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 the origin story of that. So there you go. Was that the same period of time? I think I remember you telling a story a while back about um, being in the mess hall or something. And I think yeah. this might have been during your know-it-all time and someone yelled yes. at you, will you stop nattering and shut the fuck up? Yes. That's to tell exactly that story? It. Yes. That's exactly how it happened. 